Hey everyone, welcome to FO Golf Channel, the standard golf instructions. And today I, uh, I'm very excited. I have my client Brian here and to do this episode with me. And so um, let's first, um, let me introduce to you guys Brian. And um, Brian, just um, tell us a little bit about, you know, golf history, who you are, and how long you've been taking a lesson with me, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've been playing golf since I was probably 16. Um, and playing is a loose term there. <laughs> right, um, right. Since then, you know, I was average scoring on a course, 120. Um, so <laughs> pretty bad. That's um, pretty much everybody, you know, yeah. how we first started. <laughs> I used to do 120. Yeah, so definitely like the average uh, golfer just getting out there and trying to hit the ball. Um, I've been doing lessons with Lawrence probably, I think we're at 10 lessons now, 10 or 11. Uh, I think today is about, or maybe 10, the 10th 10. one, yeah, um, yes. And that's been over the course of three or four months um, since joining and, and practicing with Lawrence. Um, I posted my lowest score ever a couple weeks ago, shot a 96. Good. Um, played bogey golf all the way until the 18th hole. And uh, <laughs> at that point, I think the heat and just ready to get off the course kind of hurt me. So I shot a, a five over on a... On one hole. On one hole. Oh, wow. Otherwise, okay. uh, I, I it would have been, been in the 80s. Bogey golf. Yeah, yeah, 89, would've been, 90. Mm -hmm. Nice, yep. nice. Okay, so it's definitely helped. Very good, very good. Now, um, I know. Um, tell me a little bit. You know, like as far as like the way how I teach. You know, we, because when I first met you, we talked about how energy first, impact later. Yep. What does that? You know, what does that resonate with you? Like, what does that mean to you? Yeah, in your mind. Absolutely. So, energy first, impact later is definitely all about swing path. Learning how to have a proper swing the swing mechanics of golf and not focusing on just hitting the ball. Anybody can go out there and hit the ball. Like I said, when I first started playing and up until six, eight months ago, I was going out and hitting, which is why I was shooting 120 or 130 almost every time I played. But since taking lessons with you, you've really instilled the energy first impact later and taught me proper swing mechanics and how to <laughs> swing a club and not hit a golf ball. Right, right. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, um, really, Brian, he's actually very honest. Um, most people, you say 120, a lot of times when most people first play, and they don't really keep their score. So, obviously, you probably keep your score kind of religiously. Unfortunately. <laughs> and some people don't. So, that's the reason why, like I say, most people, you know, average score really is about 105. But anyway, um, so uh, we're going to start a lesson. So, we're going to ignore the camera. So, we're just going to go back to um, today is the 10th lesson. So, um, all right. So, so Brian, right now, I know you started playing. Now, any questions for me right now regarding everything we have talked about? We talked about the full swing. We talked about a lot of basic stuff, and we talked about chipping. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think we talked about putting that much. No, not yet, right? We haven't, but we, we, I think we need to get into it. Yeah. So, um, any question overall? You know, when Outside you're playing of putting, um, the biggest question, or I guess biggest area I still need to work on, I think, is just from a chipping or, or sand trap standpoint, being able to get up and out um, in a minimum number of swings, obviously. Um, I don't think it's necessarily distance control. I think I do okay with that. I think it's more just, especially sand or if I'm in a rougher area, getting that club face open so that I can get under the ball and still make decent contact, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's no, so you know what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you, um, did you watch my link on the bunker videos? I haven't yet. Okay, you, you probably need to uh, watch that, and um, we can do a lesson over at St. Marla one day uh, okay. for bunker, just purely bunker. Okay. So, but before we do the lesson, I'm gonna definitely send you the video, and we do have a two videos that's uh, purely about just basic bunker shots. How do we get out from the um, greenside bunker? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference between. Now, I don't know, you know, when you talk about bunker, there's a greenside bunker and then the fairway bunker. Right, so there are differences, but we are getting into it. Yeah. So, um, as far as um, when you talk about short game chipping, you talk about what areas? Like, still struggling a little bit with inside 30 yard to yeah, 120? Really, yeah, and I'd say I'm okay 100 yards out. Really, where I struggle is honestly that 30 to 50 range. All right. Especially if it's in a thicker lie, you know, trying to gauge that how much power do I need to get through the thick rough maybe on the you know if it's on the fringe or outside of the green and you know I gotta chip it from 10-15 yards down onto the green okay 
Um, let's let's why don't we just talk about that today? And I'm glad we have some grass. And the truth is, we're gonna uh, experience with different kind of like a lie, you know, even on the bare ground like that. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about that. So let me see. Um, when you're dealing with those distance, what clubs do you use right now? I know you have a like a 56 and a pitching wedge. Yeah. And um, any other wedges that you have? That's usually it. That okay. In the bag, I've got a 60 um, that I could use, but. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. A 56 is actually, to be honest with you, a 56 degree wedge is plain. You can go around literally anywhere from 0 to 120. Well, not 120, but 0 to about 100 yards. Okay. All right, so this is what I want you to do. Let me see you. Save an example. I'm going to actually give you, um, throw in some wenches. Means um, give you some tough lies right now. Um, I'm actually going to bury this ball. Okay, I want to bury the ball into, I just want to see what you do with it. Okay, I'm actually literally stepping down on it, and now I'm going to put some ball in the grass, very thick grass, all right? So first, let me see you um, get the ball out from there. Say right now, that ball right now, the ball is in the, um, like a divot, mm -hmm. okay? So let me see you, say right now, that's uh, 100 yards. Let me split the difference between the 100 to now. See those two balls right there? Yeah. Uh, there's a cl cluster of balls yeah. right there. From here to there is almost about 40, 50 yards. Okay. So let me see you try to cover that distance. Okay. okay. So right away, this is pretty amazing. Right away. Um, okay. So. Um, this is absolutely fascinating. That's why I'm so glad we're doing this lesson today because You don't see yourself, but There's very little connection between the arms and the body. Okay, so this is literally what Brian just did Okay, and what's funny is on tape you see it. So what you tend to do when you even doing a practice swing There was a lot of arm movement Okay, so when you hit it now the truth is that wasn't bad. It actually went out. You, you the ball literally was in the divot. But the problem with that is that you're not able to create this rotational movement where the shaft. Now usually I don't like to talk about moment of impact, but the idea is that if you're turning your body correctly, the shaft it's going to be traveling in front of the ball. Right now, I can see that you have a hard time doing that, especially when you talk about those longer grasses, like the tougher lights. So in other words, you would definitely try to scoop it out. Yeah. Okay, so we're definitely going to talk about that today. I want to work on this. So you can see right now, Brian, based on my observation when I saw you, what you did is that you are actually just moving your arms a lot and you're moving your shoulders a lot. So what we want to do today, I'd like to see you right at the get-go Get your hips opened up, okay? Get your hips opened up and lower your body more. And as you can see on the downswing, because if you do it very slowly, you can see, Brian, on the downswing, I'm still going to weight transfer. But the most important things right now is that you haven't been able to connect with your core pressure. Because you already said that with longer swings, you actually have no problem doing that. It's because you are using a lot more lower body core acceleration. But it's the shorter swing you have a hard time connect with the rotation. When I say connect means your arms are not connecting with the center pressure. But because it's a controlled distance, you go, well, do I swing harder or swing less? Yeah. Right? You don't know that. And then then the visually speaking, when the ball is literally on the, in that hole right here, then you go, oh my God, I'm going to try to pick it out. So the most efficient way would be like not picking it out, but allow your body and the arms stay connected. So that way you can see when I turn my body, my hands are in front of the ball. All right, so we're going to work on this a little bit. So let me show you exactly what we're talking about, right? Go and set up just without the ball right now, right? Okay. So first thing what we got to do is that when you take the club back, when you do a practice swing, yes, you should already feel like you're doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now right now your hips are really turning right now, right? Mm -hmm. So on the downswing, here's something about what I mean by connections that, what's well, this right now? Once you move your hips, and notice how your body is turning. Now if you look at it right now, see how tight this thumb is? Mm -hmm. That thumb right there, it is absolutely going to be the culprit of all the bad things that's about to happen. Okay. So do that one more time, okay? So set up please, right? Okay, so I want to turn. Watch this. Once you weight transfer, once you weight transfer, notice how much that your lead arm is in front of the ball. Mm -hmm. So what happens is there is a connection right here, and then you, then you allow this feeling of a throttle that's getting through the ball. Okay. Okay. Yep. Because a lot of times what you're doing, because especially when the ball is in the uh, <laughs> ground, the rough, in the rough yep. and you what you're doing, then you start to use this hand try to pick it out mm -hmm. and that's extremely common mm -hmm. because now I'm gonna have you do it just one more time with just your left arm okay just your left arm okay so what's this let me see weight transfer stay connected with your body perfect perfect right there you notice how a moment of impact the face is actually steeper mm -hmm. right and again we're not we're not dealing with the face angle what we're dealing with is how much can you create this transmitting energy that's transmitting because when you're transmitting the energy properly the shaft was going to be in front of the ball mm -hmm. you see yep. and then you let the force take over okay. right try that one time now okay just one hand just one hand good now I would like to see you do it one time where you touch the ground really be aggressive when I say aggressive, means be really aggressive. How much can you find your core feeling and your hips that's dictating how much you're using? Yes, right? Perfect, perfect. Let's do that one more time. Let's go a little bit more aggressive, okay? Love that. Now what if I do, I'd like to see you do it one more time. Let the club go. i really like to see you take a divot. Now, I don't want you to feel like you're hitting down on it, but I do like to see you find the resistance mm -hmm. of the centrifugal force and the centripetal weight, okay. right? So try that one time. Perfect. I love that. I love that. So do that one more time and see how much deeper can you get through. Bingo. Now here's the tricky part, right now you say, well I don't know the distance, mm -hmm. but the, here's something, think about though, if your formula is incorrect, mm -hmm. on the downswing you keep doing that, mm -hmm. chance or you're never installing a database or memory bank what that distance feels like. Okay. Now in the beginning, even with <laughs> correct technique, you're still not going to be matched the distance, but at least your formula is correct. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to get the ball off the ground based on a m touch. We want to get the ground based on energy that's transmitting an emotion, mm -hmm. right? So now go ahead and try that one more time, right? Ball. Yeah, with the ball now, right? So try to think about the same thing we've been talking about. Don't worry about the face angle, right? Stand a little bit taller, I do believe, yeah. Okay. So think about 50 yards. That's good. Let's do that one more time. Now, again, I'm going to give you a, a very harsh condition right now. If you can do this, you can do, do it anywhere. Okay. Try that one more time. Stand a little bit taller. Good. Right, think about 50 yard. What is a 50 yard feels like with your core and your speed? Right, don't worry about contact. Boom. I was right at 50 yards. Right now, maybe a little bit shorter, but you can see the difference between this one and that one. Yeah. Now, everybody's watching, his ball literally was what? In a ditch, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So a lot of times you would top the ball. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is how you have to, the key words, most people always hear like tour players say, hey, stay aggressive, stay, they always say, I'm gonna stay aggressive. Really, aggression means how much can you trust your hip pressure and your core rotational speed mm -hmm. and when I say pressure just means how much umph is like a force emotion that you try to create yeah. right so
So we're going to keep doing that in the ditch. Okay? So everybody's watching it. And we're going to keep doing that with the same movement, right? We're going to literally put that in the ditch. Where I'm actually, he's actually stepping on the ball right now. So I do like to see you just stand a little bit taller. Yes. Be aggressive about it, right? I love that. Now, the ball went a little bit to the right. Mm -hmm. That means what in your mind? If it, it did come out, but went to the right, so what happened there? Blood face was open. Open, right? So that means you didn't release. Please. You got it. So release means, let me show you what I mean. When you, yes. So do that one more time with a lead arm, right? So if you rotate, boom. You got it. Yeah. And that was good. Just didn't release. Just didn't release. Yeah. But... But also you didn't what? You didn't pick it, pick it. right? Let's do it one more time. Stand a little bit taller. Good. I like that much better. Yeah, relax. Right? Focus on connection between your hip core. How bad? Now again, well, I'm giving you extreme harsh environments, right? Now Here's the tricky part right now. I'm actually going to give you a better environment right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm still stepping down on it, but this is on the grass. So go ahead and try to hit 50 yards, right? So let me see you get through a 50-yard motion. Love that. Oh, is that your phone? No, it's your iPad. Oh, my iPad. <laughs> All right. All right, 50 yards. Ah, so right away, you see, you still tend to pick it off, right? Okay, so this is exactly what I wanted to do right now. Set up, please. Okay. All right. So open your stands a little bit. Good. Make the ball position forward of your stands more. Now forward, go back. Oh, perfect right there okay stand a little bit taller okay all right now go ahead and think about 50 yard motion okay close your eyes close your eyes 50 yard motion close your eyes boom <laughs> was your eyes closed yeah yes <laughs> no no I know most people can't see that ball that was a good shot yeah. with the eyes closed yeah. so basically what happened is that you you already know that the reason why most people, a lot of guys, you guys watching the movies why you tend to pick the ball is because you have hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. But right now, because Brian, you have been taking lessons from me for a while, you know what it feels like to move, move your hips in your court. Yep. So as soon as I have you close your eyes, you're able to do that a little bit better. Yeah. That was, I mean, again, that was a really good shot, mm -hmm. right? Got to do it more consistently. Right. So what happens right now? I do, I do notice one thing though, and I just didn't mention it to you. I did notice one thing that you do tend to put the ball a little bit back in the stance. So right now, when the ball is right here, I notice that you do tend to put the ball in the back of your stance. So that's probably the reason why it's also allow you to try to pick the ball a little bit. The reason why I think about, do you remember um, what is the principle and property of a ball position when you're dealing with ball position? If you don't remember, that's okay. I don't remember. <laughs> that's all right. Remember I say that. If your ball is close to your back foot, means your 12 foot, yeah. that means you're always hitting or swinging through with a lower ball fly. Okay. So right now, the truth is, I noticed that earlier you tend to put the ball on the back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happens now, watch, if I have, say I have 56 degree right now, if the ball is on the back, now again, most tour players may tell you something different. But I'm saying to you from a standard perspective, yes, with me on the ball in the back, I could still probably swing through with a high ball flight, but that's trick shot. That's like more manipulated. Because right now for you, when you're working on this, remember if the ball is on the back foot, that means the ball is a much lower ball flight. So it means right now, it tells me, Brian, you have hard time still with the shorter shots, letting the club rotate. Because if you, 
when you have the ball, which don't worry, I'm gonna have you do it. Remember, if the ball's on the way back, chance are you, if you try to see, oh, I'm gonna catch the ball with my hands, guess what you do? You will elevate it. But the idea if the ball's on the back of your foot, you are actually hitting a lower ball fly. Because remember, the club's gonna do what? The club has to do what? Rotate through the ball. But when the ball is on the back of your foot, it's harder for your mind to accept that fact that you're rotating. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, right? So let's come here real quick, Brian. I love it. All right, so this is what I want you to do. I'm going to do it with you having the ball position literally pointing at your toes right now. So remember, you're visually speaking, you go, oh my God, my ball's on my toes right now. It's easy for me to catch it up like this. But unfortunately, that's incorrect. You are still catching the ball more like that. Okay. So that's why it's so low. Right. Got it. But wouldn't a good, clean through contact? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But that was on your toes. Now, that's the reason why a lot of times when you watch TV, most pro players, the truth is, a lot of you guys watching, you really don't know what the poor, poor player is doing when you're playing tournaments. So whatever you see is all external. It doesn't mean anything. Like it won't make any sense. If then if you try to copy it, it just gets worse. Yeah. Okay. So now what's this, Brian? I'm gonna put the ball in the four of your stands, right? Mm -hmm. So now think about it. Right now the ball is kind of a little bit right of your um, lead toe, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So watch the same idea happens because you're turning your body. You notice how I'm releasing with the rotational. Yep. So that means right now. It just means one, all this time when you're playing on course, you probably have the ball too much close to the back foot. Mm -hmm. But if you're putting on a back foot, if you don't rotate, you go into what? You either hit fat or thin mm -hmm. or to push right. to the right. Yeah. Occasionally, you may catch it correctly, the ball will go higher. But that is exactly what I mean, a false sense of image based on a wrong equation. Okay. Then you go, well, how can I repeat that? Well, you can. Unless you know how to control your energy like most tall player does. Gotcha. Now, yes. I've always heard when you're chipping or pitching, you want your feet kind of close together. Is that accurate? Or do you want um, just a normal stance or does that's, it not no, matter? That, no, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. So we already established, you now the whole time we have been using a 56 wedge, yeah. which is the most common wedge. The truth is, to me, the distance of stance has to do with your playing style and how you like to control the result of a ball fly or the trajectory. Okay, so Brian, stand in front of me, please, right? Understanding right now, obviously, we're dealing with pitching somewhere outside 30 to 120, and then we're dealing with chipping. You can never go wrong if you chip with a narrow stand like that. You can never go wrong with that. That's almost like a standard. Now, I know a lot of people would chip like this. When you do that, you see people, that will, that's already becoming more of a lob shot. You see what I'm saying? So we haven't gotten to that, but a lot of times you can see if I'm doing this right now, and I'm doing, and see how high the ball is, it went about 20 yards. That's a really a lob shot, okay? But when you're pitching, say right now, I just want to do a normal shot, which, what you, what you mentioned to me earlier, that's the problem area that you have. Really, that's what most people have. Isn't it funny, Brian, you shoot in the 90s and 80s, you're already thinking about the scoring zone, which is great because that's exactly where you're going to shave your strokes, right? So if you're hitting like, say, 50, 60 yards, you can have a narrow stand just like that. Now, whenever you see people opening stands or they are already try to do something to the ball fly or the spin ray okay but from a standard perspective you're always doing what you can do it narrow stands or a little bit wider or parallel to the target you know the target line which is your setup and that's totally fine right but remember earlier we talked about you don't want if you put the ball on the back foot right now you're hitting the ball with a low ball fly if you don't let it release now, mind you, I know a lot of people ask me, well, what, what, what does the tour player do? If they are putting the ball on the back foot, 
they were doing something very drastically that's manipulating the ball fly and the spin. Most people are not going to do that. Because right now you can see the ball's on the back foot and then if I go like this, the ball actually went really high, but do I want to do that? No. Because I know if I want to hit the ball higher, guess where I put the ball? Exactly, the front. So the player would do crazy stuff, but it doesn't mean it's right or standard. You know, and if they try to teach you, but if you don't have any type of rotation, forget it. You're not going to be able to pull off, right? So the idea is that if you have a 50 yard, anyway, between 50 and 100, you can put the ball in the front, front of your stands and do, do that rotation we talked about, meaning the number one release. Now, once you get comfortable, I am going to teach you the number two release, which is what I call the block. But right now, it's going to be much better for you to just do the number one and get comfortable doing that and you'll be happy that you know how to do that because that becomes a much more consistent go-to shot right so let's try a couple more times and that's really now the reason why you have a hard time getting out of those grabs because you're not the idea is most people listening when we when we talk about number one is really what i call compression mm -hmm. right you know now we're talking about full compression yeah. right okay so we're going to do a couple of times, right? Even now, I'm, I'm putting the ball on the bare ground, right? Mm -hmm. So the ball is in a little bit, move the body the way, a little bit more, right? Watch. You want to release. You see? Mm -hmm. Even with that, you can tell we can get a lot more acceleration through the ball. Yep. Because remember, if you try to get under the ball, you chance are you will either hit the ground first or you will thin it, mm -hmm. right? We're going to do it one more time. Then I'm going to have you do it on your own. I really want you to put the ball in the front of your stance and work on that compressional release, which is what we call the FO Golf number one spin. Look at that. Now, let me ask you, when I was doing that, do you think about the face angle? You, you just see, wait a minute, he's just spinning the club. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm telling you guys, if you even think about square the face, you're too late. Yeah. You're too late because what happens, if you square the face, guess what you do? You will deal off, means you will use your right hand, mm -hmm. right? and then you will stop the rotation of the body, which is not going to allow you to accelerate. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the trouble can come in, yep. right? And the reason why, Brian, if I'm doing this right now, you can see, wouldn't you agree, all oh, the ball went pretty straight? Mm -hmm. Even where to feel like the face is completely shut, yeah. but the ball actually went straight, yep. right? And tell the camera so you, you're not it lying. Straight. It went straight, <laughs> right? So people say, oh my God, the ball is going to go left. No, it's just because it's released. It has nothing to do with how the direction will go off the face yeah. right so I'm gonna have you do it right now okay the truth is you can literally do it with a pitching wedge with any club that you have mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna put it on the grass I really like to see you put the ball in the middle on the front right and then let the club rotate through the ball and obviously you will turn your hips and you turn your body stand a little bit taller there you go I do think you need to stand a little bit taller sometimes I think you get a little bit too low all right, so do that, right? Just rotate. Right, yeah, you, right now your rotational rate is a little slow. Mm -hmm. Try that one more time. Right, keep doing that. That ball went to the right. Hold on one sec. I see what happens. I see what happens. Okay. So, right now when you get through, but you want to feel like it's coming from your left arm. Okay. okay, you really want to feel like it's coming from your left arm mm -hmm. because the pulling motion of the body. Mm -hmm. And also, as you can see, if you get from the left arm, mm -hmm. the shaft is going to lean because your body's leading and turning it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're releasing through it, right? Yep. So let's try that. Stand a little bit taller. I do believe you got it. Yes. Okay. So just think about the fanning feeling. But your body has to get first. Bingo. Okay. Now, why is that so important? Because when you are in deep grass or dirt like that, that is the only way for you right now you can get out mm -hmm. without wasting any strokes. Yep. Okay. And that's just like we're going to do in the dirt and do the same thing, please. I do believe you tend to shut the face when you sit up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, do that. Good. And relax. Perfect. Good job. Okay. Square the target a little bit. Square. There you go. No. Move your body this way. Perfect. That's perfect setup right now. I definitely don't want you to get lower than that. I think I do think you can. I would get a little bit closer to the ball. A little bit closer to the ball. Stand a little bit closer to the ball. There you go, right there. That's perfect. Good. Now make sure you have a fanning rotational image. Allow your hips and your core to connect. Yes. That was nice. Now the ball is in the ditch. Boom. That's fine. Now remember, that was a topped ball, but that wasn't the top type of ball where you're scolding it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Obviously, most if you can see it, the ball is in a pretty harsh condition, mm -hmm. right? So let's keep doing that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go to the grass now, right? All right, Brian, let's do it from here. Same idea, right? Okay, perfect. And relax your grip a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Stand taller. Good. All right, body and fan. Yes. Now remember that shot right there. Would you love that? Love what you just did. Now let me ask you this: What were you thinking when you were doing all of that? Rotate my hands. Rotate your hands, right? Make sure I follow through with the rotation. Right. So you're not thinking about when the club's gonna enter in the ball. No. Good. Perfect. Let's try that one time. Right. Love that. Good. So whenever you're doing that, guess what happens, right? That means your trail arm. Yes, your trail arm is extending it. Because if you think about it right now, do that one more time just with your lead arm. Okay. Think about it right now. Once you get to here, right, once you're turning your hips and moving, this club is doing what? It's turning. So a lot of times when you're turning it, Right, when you're turning it, you're not going to extend. Mm -hmm. You cannot extend the arms to the ball. Gotcha. Okay. So do that one more time. Stand a little bit taller. Good, perfect. Right there. Right. Think about 50 yards right now. What is a 50 yard rotation, right? Beautiful. Now again, I don't mind. See, the beautiful thing, the reason why I say that he... You even hit a fat, but the truth is that was an accelerated movement. Mm -hmm. It's not a decelerated fat shot. Okay. okay. Let's try to keep doing that. Now, I actually want you to do it with the pitching wedge a little bit. Right now, right? Good. Same idea. Uh, show me a practice swing. What's a 50-yard what's a acceleration? It means 50-yard rotation. Beautiful. All right, so do the same thing, 50 yard rotation. Move your hips, move your core. Boom. What's funny, that right there went about 65 because of the pitching wedge, yep. right? That was a good shot right there. Now we're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna go back to your wedge. But would you agree now that feeling of the rotation come in handy now, it just feels like you can get through the ball a little bit better now. Yeah, absolutely. Got it, stand a little bit taller. Yeah. Boom. Look how smooth that was. So what yards was that? About 80. Yes. But you have two wedges. Yeah. The truth is, let me see you hit a 30 yard with a pitching wedge. Same idea, right? You can do a practice swing, 30 yard rotation. I just want to see, I just want to show the camera. Guys, relax a little bit. Let me, I just want to see the camera, the way he's hitting it on the last two shots. Right? The truth is, even I show the camera, but you know from all our lessons, I don't care about this. Yeah. I really don't never care about where you hit the ball. It's all the energy. It doesn't matter. Okay, but I do want you guys to see it. But the idea of what you guys see is purely a resolve of what he's doing with the energy, not because he's focusing on that spot. Very nice. So 30 yards, Brian.
Ah, so right now you scout a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we're gonna do it one more time. Now, why do you think you scout a little bit? Trail arm. Trail arm. Extended. Extending. The reason why is because that's the reason why when you have shorter distance, it's actually harder because you actually don't know how much you need here. Mm -hmm. So then you start to decelerate based on control. Mm -hmm. So let's try to do that one more time. 30 yards, right? Love that. Love that. 30 yards. Boom. You even took a divot. Yep. That was it. That was it. Now I'm going to go back to that. Now here's something to think about. Now you have 56. Could you hit 30 yards? Yep. Absolutely. Yes. So we're going to go to 30 yards, right? You got it. And you can do a practice swing, right? 30 yards, 30 yard acceleration, 30 yard rotation, perfect. And leave the trail on alone, right? Boom. What's funny, it actually went further. Yeah. And that went about maybe 40 yards. Mm -hmm. But you can see all of them are very good shots. It just right now you can see how yeah, based on the, good. yes, you, then you as a player, you got to figure out what that means. Mm -hmm. So to conclude what we just talked about, the reason why you have a hard time doing those shots, remember earlier we had you put in ditch, tall grass, all of that, it doesn't matter as long as you have the movement. Yeah. Now obviously if you're in a ditch, it may take away some percentage of the output. Yeah. And then you have to learn how to be more aggressive, but that's really just coming to experience. But the idea, the how do you do it, the correct skill, that's what's implementing right now. Does it make sense? Yeah. And also what's missing out with you is you're putting the ball on the back foot. Yeah. The truth is, I'm going to actually have you do it now on the back foot. Just see if you can able to rotate and compress the ball. Okay. Right? I love it, man. So we're going to have Brian do some crazy stuff now. He's going to do it with the ball literally on the back foot. Now, if the ball goes way too high, that means he's definitely not compressing. I love what you just did right there. So compress the ball. Boom! Look at that! Divots. Isn't that crazy? You're hitting a divots. That's the ball that's on the back foot. Most people are like, man, how did I do that? Yeah. You're doing it now. You're a good coach. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. So, um, that's exactly what you have to do right now. Yeah. Meaning, because the ball on the back foot earlier, you say, wait, this is as crazy as it sounds. A lot of times when I go to range, I see people even when they swing with the irons. I know a lot of times people say, well, the, the shorter the club, the ball's back. I'm like, well, yeah. Are you hitting lower shots or hitting high shots? What are you hitting? Yeah. And they can't tell you. They say, well, I just want to get the ball up. I'm like, okay, well, you don't. Then you actually don't have a method of operation that you're practicing. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you want to hit a high shot? Yeah. And only you know how to hit a high shot. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's keep doing that. I'm gonna do a couple more, and this time I wanna, I wanna, we're gonna throw Brian some um, tricky stuff. I'm gonna literally stepping down on it, right? So I want you to do the exact same thing. Put the ball on the. Now here's the tricky part. I stepping down on it. Can you put the ball in the front or on the back? Can you do both or can you do just one? I can do both. Absolutely, you can do yeah. both. That was a trick question. You can absolutely do both. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to have you do the, put the ball in the front foot, right? But I do like to see you do the same movement we've been talking about, right? The rotational, the rotational compressional movement. Look at that. And make sure you're being aggressive to it, right? Because the ball is stepping down, so you got to be a little bit more aggressive. Boom. Okay, now did you have yardage in mind when you're doing that? No. Exactly. So that's exactly why I didn't ask him the yardage. So remember, when you're practicing, now obviously, yes, you got to have a yardage, but that actually went out about, I say what, 30 yards? Yeah. But it's okay because I literally stepping down, down on the ball. So in other words, if it's 50 yards, then you got to say, okay, what kind of aggression I have from here? Mm -hmm. Because this, this is not going to help you. Yeah. Because remember, if you're helping them from here, you're just decelerating. Mm -hmm. Right? Got so it. we're going to do it one more time. Okay. And this time I'm actually going to put in the same ditch area and I'm going to have 
Brian do the same thing. This time he's going to actually, see, he's going to choose the ball, put it on the back foot, which is very smart. Because right now you know in that situation, a back ball, ball on the back foot with a rotation, that's, I love what you just did right there. What yard did you have? 45. Okay. Boom. Not 45. But that's okay though, because what you're doing is that you, I'm going to have you do it one more time because that's exactly what you, again, based on the lessons, you can see there's no way yeah. you're going to be hitting in that big divots, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, I want to do one more just to give you that, you know, harsh environment. And I want you to be, a, you know, be aggressive to accelerate through the ball, right? Still same idea, 45, but you definitely need more energy than earlier, right? All right? Boom! Yeah, but look at how nice that ball was, though. Yeah. And the truth is, <laughs> just so you know, when you're in a situation like that, most people do what? They play winter rules. They're going to play from there. Yeah. So just by doing that, right? Better, better off. <laughs> well, well, the idea is that you can see it's not, it's, it's not in the rumba impossibility. Mm -hmm. You literally can get it out. Yeah. But I've, obviously, you're not going to be dealing with this type of situation all yeah. the time, right? All right, so now <laughs> we're not going to... Give it a hard time to Brian, which is doing great, man. Yeah. Now just go ahead and hit a 50 yard from there. Right? Good. Ball in the front. When I say front, it doesn't mean really front. It means just center left. 50 yard, right? 50 yard compression, 50 yard rotation. Boom. Now you definitely hit a little fat right there, mm -hmm. but you know why now? Yeah. It's because the. Extended the track right. Arm. Correct. But so that's how you can work on understanding what you're doing from a swing mechanical perspective like what is the correct thing to do mm -hmm. and the truth is you're doing great because a lot of people in front of camera you know they they're not able to perform tense up but you're doing just fine because you're able to adhere with those rules mm -hmm. all right so any more questions regarding this area no. does no, it make no. sense though yeah. Makes perfect sense. and then you can start to really practice and the truth is you can practice with the ball front and the back it doesn't matter just know you know when the ball is on front with the same club the ball is going to go higher with the ball in the back right. it's, gonna it's going to go lower but you can do both okay. and sometimes earlier you're actually very smart when when i put the ball in the ditch you put the ball in the back that tells me you want to get that early shaft leaning and compression so you can get it out and the truth is, when you actually are playing that position, <laughs> people are going to go, man, take it out, Brian. I say, well, you're gonna, hey, you're going to give me an extra short if I take it out? Or if I don't, yeah. you're going to give me an extra dollar? And you can bet on it. Because yeah. you know what to do. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Brian. So um, we're going to wrap it up as far as the camera. So probably Brian is going to have some other questions. But this is a great... Again, this lesson, Brian asked me, how do we get better shots? from inside 30 to 100, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And his tendency was early, he's tend to hit, get a thin or not able to get out. You say, I don't know how much energy I have to use, mm -hmm. but the truth is, if you have the wrong image, you are using the wrong energy anyway. Yep. Because if you try to, you know, scoop the ball off the ground or mm -hmm. off the thick grass, grass, it can't do that. You gotta let the compressional movement happen, mm -hmm. right? It. So cool, man. All right. Thank you for you guys watching this channel and um, this video. And thank you, Brian, for doing that. Absolutely. You know, you're doing a great job. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, Brian. Okay. Um, guys, I have to turn it back on the, uh, the camera to record this. This is one of the most important things. I'm so glad um, Brian, he actually mentioned it to me. Usually, now isn't that funny? When I first met you, I say that whenever you have any kind of pain, you got to let me know. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I mentioned to you in first and second lessons. So right now, um, earlier we've been talking about the, um, the, you know, the short game, the pitch shots. And so I turn off the camera. He said that, you know, you have some pain, right? Show me where your pain was you talked about. Usually like the wrist. The wrist or right in the elbow. Right. Okay. So those are the areas. That's exactly what I was saying to most people that is because you're not releasing. Mm -hmm. The idea is that your left arm is n through impact is never straight. Okay. Never straight. So right now... I'm going to face camera. Let me ask you this right now. Remember, we did this before. I say that to you, Brian. I want you to tighten the muscles right now. Okay. 
So you tighten the muscles. You, you're doing great. Look, yeah. you're not you're not have pressure here, mm -hmm. right? So the muscles here is very tight. Yeah. Can you explain to the guys watching this what's the feeling? Like the muscles tight and your hands are pretty loose, right? Yeah. Right, and then the arms are not extending like you're doing a yeah. uh, a, a um, tricep press down, right? So you tighten it. The idea is that sometimes a lot of you guys, if your wrist is hurting, if you have a golf tennis, they call it a golf elbow, that means you're not releasing the club. And a lot of times you're extending it. Um, you're extending this arm. Mm -hmm. That's what's causing that jam. You know? Like a bug, right? Yeah. Good. So, that's what's causing that pain. Yeah. Okay, so what you have to do, you got to go home and start. Remember we talked about you got that do that left arm rotational exercise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Golf right. Yeah. This, just so you know, guys, whenever you have any type of injury, it's always based on jamming it. Because why? What is a jam? Just means your body is going to do what? Extension. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a jam. Yeah. And it's like a pool. Uh -huh. Right? So what's this? Um, Brian, you have a towel? Uh, yeah. Let's get, let's get a towel real quick. Perfect. All right, guys. I know you guys watched one of my videos before where I talked about don't use the ground. Here's something to think about. Remember, I say that to you, golf is a three-dimensional motion. Mm -hmm. Any type of two-dimensional movement or motion that you see is purely based by a, a three-dimensional movement is a result of a three-dimensional movement. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this right now. I have this rope right here, this rope. Right, Ron? Yeah. If I turn the rope, if I turn the rope, would you agree the distance between the top end is shorter? If I'm turning it. Yes. 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 You got it. Now, obviously, yes, it contracts. It contracts. So, if I was doing this right now, obviously, the tower doesn't have muscle here. But our body is doing that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying to you guys is, any type of extension movement, like when you extension your arms, mm -hmm. It's not based on you want to extend. It has to base on if you are turning. Okay. Meaning right now this towel right here, if I'm turning the towel, the top and the bottom, the distance shorter. Then you go, oh, wait a minute, there's a contractional movement. I said, no. There's really no what? Up and down force. Mm -hmm. The up and down image is created by what? A rotational okay. force. So that's the reason why a lot of people say, oh, look at that, they're squatting down and they're coming up. No, it's just because you're releasing that rotational force. Okay. Would you agree? Yeah. Because you're re releasing that. So it feels like you're going up and down. Got it. Okay. That's the reason why a lot of people get very, but that's the reason why, but remember your natural human instincts to do what? To extend. Yeah. So what I would like to do right now, Brian, remember the first exercise I showed you? Yeah. I would love you to keep doing that now. Put that in, right? Really focus on, try to use the muscles here. Turn. Yeah, you will have to start doing that now. Uh, otherwise, that pain is always gonna come back because when you go play on 18 holes, you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. You always go back to that natural human instinct. Got it. Yeah, you have to allow the club to rotate now. Which is exactly what we did earlier when we're doing the release. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so what happened right now was if you swing right now, right? If you swing it, see how the rotation happens. You're never extending it. Mm -hmm. It has to be based on rotation. Got it. Right? It has to be based on rotation. rotation. Okay. Now, <laughs> isn't that funny, Brian? Isn't that now you do have to agree? I've been talking to you about this in, in early lessons, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. But. I'm never going to blame my clients because that's what makes golf so difficult. I could give you the right information until such such time mm -hmm. that it's applying it. Yeah. You know, now you know why you start hurting it. Yeah. Right? It's like, wait a minute. I'm, yeah, pay more attention. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the reason why I'm glad you tell me that. So that's why anytime when you have a pain, the truth is, if you guys go out there playing golf, if you have any type of pain, you're not swinging correctly. That's just the bottom line. Because the truth is, most tour players, they play four days. You think they have pain, they can play four days? No way. Yeah. You got to be swinging. And if you do swing, you really have no any kind of stress point. Mm -hmm. Got it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
All right, cool, man. Thanks for watching, guys. I mean, I, I'm so glad you actually mentioned it. That this is exactly what... Isn't that kind of funny? It actually coherence matches what we talked about with the release yeah. with the shoulder. Goes along with the lesson. Yes, man. Awesome. Go and do Thank that you. movement, but extend. Oh, yes. Perfect. But you got to turn your body. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So incorporate your body movement, right? Incorporate your body movement and turn. Boom. Right, you're turning right away and turn. Okay. Now would you suggest taking a couple weeks off to let my arm? Yes. So if you talked about the right now, let it heal. Yeah. Don't 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 overstress it. Don't overstress. You know, um, put ice on it. Yeah. You know. I've known ice and icy hot. Yeah. And I, stuff. Yes. But definitely, you know, after today's lesson, just you know, um, lay off for a couple of days when it's completely healed because that's exact but most people see the problem is that most people don't even know they hurt yeah no I know I'm hurt but <laughs> they, they guess what you you most people get recovered and they go back and do the same thing yeah. and then guess you know how some people wear those arm braces arm braces yeah <laughs> they, they wear those arm braces and elbow braces and they don't even know why yeah I'm I like it's a mix of probably the extension and then one day I was playing at Collins Hill and I felt myself tweak it when uh -huh. I put a T in the ground because the ground was just so rock hard. Yeah, so yeah, gets. The way I did my wrist with trying to put the T in the ground, I felt a small pool, and then I put I continued playing because I was like, okay, whatever. Um, I was like, I'm only on hole eight. <laughs> oh God, ten, <laughs> ten more holes. I'm not, I'm not quitting. And uh, so I felt that, and I just never let it fully heal. You know, like I said, I give it a week. But it feel okay and then I, go back <laughs> I probably reactivated it because I'm extending right right well then your, your right hand is helping it too yeah. see look but because I know because any type of pain you trust me I had that pain before yeah I mean like I say I'm 47 now I mean I had those yeah. pains well how old are you right now 26 26 I mean I had those pains while I was in your age yeah because I'm like what, what happened yeah. and then I'll let it rest and go back and do the same thing and get hurt again I'll say like, that you can't do that yeah. you can't play golf like that not so I mean, I gotta let but, it heal. yeah, let it heal let it and um, get comfortable. And uh, but the good thing about golf is that once you correct it, you never get hurt again. Yeah. Because now this kind of sinking with your, you know, learning progression. Yeah. Yeah. And the truth is, right now, again, you know, you met. I mean, I told you, I was more hurt before when I was in the yeah. <laughs> late twenties, mm -hmm. early thirties. Now I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm never hurt. Yeah. It's because. The, the swing mechanics are getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah, so good, man. Do that one more time. I just want to see on it's on camera, right? Watch, well, right? You just hold it with your left arm, right? Good. Perfect. And I do like to see you incorporate a lot more. Yeah. Rotate the cuff, right? Okay. Do that one more time. Rotate. Perfect. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Guess what's that happened? That means there's an extension of a energy and a force is not because you're extending right it's just just like that rope right <laughs> it's, it's fascinating man people say oh everybody says Rory is standing up and down I'm like dude man you, you're not standing up and down it's just your release you have a torque because there's no a force that's pulling you right or oh, same thing with a same thing with a, 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 a muscle car you know how muscle car before they take off mm -hmm. the front end drops yeah Nobody's pushing it down. Yeah. Why does it drop forward? The torque. The torque. Yeah. So that's what's crazy about golf. Like people say, oh look at Rory standing up and down. I'm like, dude, okay man, you know a lot about golf swing. Go ahead and try to do that, stand up and down. Yeah. I mean, it's, and you know what I'm talking about? You see how it yeah. get me worked up? And then you say, they, they're gonna be, they're gonna be on the camera go, man, I'm gonna do this. And Rory talking about squatting up and down. I'm gonna do that. Gonna hurt themselves. Yeah. It, it's it's fascinating, man. That's the reason why I'm telling like like people like Golf Channel, Golf Magazine. You, uh, you know now, I say, man, do you guys understand golf swing? Yeah. Do you seriously understand golf swing that you put stuff like that on on the golf magazine so amateurs can go and learn and copy? Mm -hmm. Good luck swinging, man. It's all about what sells the magazine. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's crazy. Like. 
Wouldn't you agree that the, what I show you, the rope makes perfect sense, right? If you turn the rope, the rope's gonna get smaller and smaller. You're gonna go, whoa, there's something pulling it down. No, there's no pulling movement. It's just turning the rope. The contraction of the, the rotational. And then when it release, it will extend. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing pulling there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> am I the only person that would think that way or what? I think you are. That's crazy, you know? Oh. Be aggressive, be aggressive and try to get through it with the rotation. Good. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> See, I mean, really, um, it's okay. when I, I mean, discover you know, that, I'm like, dude, well, See, look, I'm putting everything on hard pan, right? Yep. So what, if I'm doing this, you know, 30 yards, right? So I do the same thing because the idea is I'm never, well, I'm never allowing my eyes to get comfortable, get entry here. I'm just telling myself my face is covering through the ball, which is the rotation, right? Hard pan, dirt covering through the ball. Right? Same idea, hard pan, dirt, right? Stepping down. If I say I want to go to that 100 yard, which is about 80 yard right now, I'm going to... Because I know the only way to get out is doing that. Now, Brian, when you're in a ferry bunker, you would need to do that too to get out. Yeah. In the ferry bunker though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because if you try to scoop it, you just hit the ground. Yeah. Same thing applies, fairway or greenside. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, greenside is a little different. Greenside, you're not dealing with long distance. We're going to talk about that. Remember, what I'm going to send you the video. Okay. Then we're going to go to um, St. Marlowe and talk about that. Okay? okay? No Good stuff, man. All right, thank you, guys.